Namaskaram Akbarna. In a series of interviews, today we have Dr. Ratesh Kharana with us. He is the chairman of Atma Online. So, how are you Dr. Kharana? Thank you, uh, Aparna. And how are you? Fine, thank you. Uh, it's been some time uh, we met since you passed uh, your MBA, so mm -hmm. let's talk. So, uh, Dr. Kharana, today we will discuss about the state of MBA education in India. What is your viewpoint? Well, uh, state of MBA education is uh, very exciting. Uh, why? Because from very small beginnings, for example, when I was a student in the 60s at Ahmedabad, uh, when there are only about a dozen institutes in the country, to about uh, 5,000 institutes, uh, over 100 universities uh, uh, offer this course. Uh, there are uh, four dozen private universities we do it, uh, even the IIMs are now over a dozen and uh, uh, few thousand uh, only PGDM institutes. So it's exciting. Uh, it is exciting like any other business, uh, though it's learning business, uh, which is different from FMCG or Sunday, uh, that it's become very competitive. Uh, till few years ago, supply was generally less than demand. And now I think the scales have tilted. But I am optimistic that this situation would mean that the institutions will have to improve the quality. They will have to offer value for money. Students have choice, but they'll have to choose the right places for the things they want. So, uh, what do you think? How should a person choose a college for MBA? Well, uh, an overall issue in India and abroad, mm -hmm. the, the, the problem, problem becomes very large. Uh, they have to see what their intellectual capability is. Then what is the affordability mm -hmm. in terms of uh, cost? I mean, people would like to go to private universities, USA, mm -hmm. but then you need to have about 25 lakh rupees in pocket or more. Similarly, in India. So one looks at one, two, three parameters, area in which one wants to be, the type of institution in terms of whether it is case oriented or theoretical, easy to pass, tough, hurdle race, affordability, and then see what your scores are on a standard test like GMAT, CAT, or ATMA, uh, uh, and therefore see the matching in terms of which institution group I can get into. And that's what we shall discuss. Uh, who should do MBA? I mean, is an ideal candidate for doing MBA? You know, Aparna, um, you recently came out of an MBA program. Mm -hmm. This kind of counseling and matching of one's aptitudes to what one should do in India, uh, there is a lot of knowledge deficit there, an attitude deficit. Again, when we were students, our parents said, you know, a doctor or an engineer or an IS officer. Mm -hmm. And what is? Well, we don't know. And now it is, well, become a doctor, an engineer or an MBA mm -hmm. or a fashion person or something or something. Choices in India have now increased. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is not a question of that, you know, I am going to have a tag of MBA. One should not do MBA for that reason. Uh, if one has the aptitude for managing things, people, resources, financial, otherwise, then one should go for MBA because MBA is meant for that. Uh, the idea that, you know, I'll get a job and I'll get a job of a particular level if I do something like this uh, is also outmoded now. So I think if it has to be defined as one criteria, then it is that I have the aptitude for it. Mm -hmm. and have that aptitude measured professionally through tests, through psychometric tests, by talking to experienced people, by talking to counselors. So that about one to two months of time, I think every person should spend to see whether this sort of a thing is right for them at that time. Maybe what is right at that time is to take a job and after getting exposure to organizations, then do an MBA. Mm -hmm. 
or not even do it and do something else, for example, fashion or health administration. I think it is in the same direction. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, I hope you mean by discipline either functional specialization like marketing finance, operation management, yeah. or sectoral specialization like health or agriculture or something. I think one doesn't have to predefine it. Uh, normally, uh, every PGDM or MBA program has a first year where all the uh, courses are taught, all the disciplines are taught. And I think it is at that time one should try to discover what one's uh, uh, special interests are. Um, and one should not be short-sighted, okay, today there are jobs in this sector, therefore I should get a stand in this sector. Uh, traditionally it has been said, including at Harvard and Iowa, that uh, MBA is a general degree and it is not supposed to be specialized degree. Uh, what uh, therefore their approach is that offer a lot of electives. For example, I think I'm in Mumbai has about, about 100, over 100 electives in the second year. And uh, and therefore, choose those electives which interest you, but not get your degree stamped as MBA bracket something or something. Mm -hmm. something, something. Personally, I subscribe to that. But lots of institutions have started with specialized programs, more in terms of segmenting uh, to be able to uh, attract some employee, uh, employee segment. Mm -hmm. How does the industry respond to MP? Industry uh, and both and, and the service sector has in fact responded brilliantly. Uh, it is uh, the foresight uh, or far-sightedness of our founders, uh, Jawaharlal Nehru and others, that from the very beginning in the committees, uh, the industries were involved. Uh, uh, younger generation may not know that first uh, director of IIM Mandubar Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, mm -hmm. not as a scientist but as a, as a textile uh, magnate mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 and uh, a number of uh, chairmen of uh, that organization, uh, Mr. Peter Tandon, Mr. Kirill Oscar, Mr. Mahindra, were industrialists actually. Uh, so uh, industry is of course very interested in uh, getting manpower of the kind they need to develop. Now for example, the uh, Hospitality Administration uh, Federation or Retailers Association Federation or other federations or CII or FICI or SHM, all of them interact very actively with the management institutes in terms of trying to both contribute as well as influence the kind of MBAs and the kind of uh, environment which should be there, uh, which should be developed. Uh, after all, it is the Infosys and the HCLs and the um, ICI series of this world, which uh, take uh, over 50 percent manpower, so uh, it is in their interest as well as uh, it is uh, their professional contribution, uh, which they make to uh, develop these programs, which are super. So, uh, tell us something about asthma test and why is it being online? Well, asthma test was founded 10 years ago um, uh, by the Association of Indian Management Schools. Uh, which is the world's uh, single largest uh, network of uh, management schools anywhere in the world, uh, over 600 organizations. And uh, Atma test uh, has been more or, like, uh, more or less like the cat or the mat. Mm -hmm. uh, now the Atma online uh, has been uh, structured, designed, so that uh, there is uh, student interest in mind. It will be conducted more often at more places. Mm -hmm. uh, the testing centers will be in tier 2, tier 3 towns also, uh, so that uh, they can easily appear in these tests. Uh, it can be constantly researched. Uh, it, it should be less expensive to administer mm -hmm. if done well. Uh, and so uh, the uh, organization decided to launch that one uh, online uh, from July session. So, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Thank you, Parna, for some very good questions and uh, hopefully we will carry on this dialogue with uh, many, many other uh, concerned people and uh, uh, get to the issues uh, so that uh, students are counseled well in terms of uh, what they do and uh, what they are uh,
best uh, 